This week on Spectrum Geeks, we are looking at cutting the cord and we're looking at the HD Home Run Connect and to seeing what can this do for us. So there's lots of discussions going on all around the world when it comes to cutting the cord, so getting rid of your paid prescriptions, utilising what's online, distributing that information to wherever you are. Um, and so I decided to pick up one of these HT Home Run Connects. And the main reason for this, which we took a look at in another video, is I'm a Plex Pass user. Uh, if you haven't heard of Plex, uh, we can talk about that in another video, so please leave comments if that's something you're interested in. Um, but they are, have released compatibility in a beta uh, with these uh, Home Run products allowing you to utilize your network storage uh, as a DVR. So this device, as we talked to, will sit on your network and you can use Plex um, to stream and record media to any of your connected devices. So it looks awesome. So I picked one of these up, uh, 100 pounds. So I think relatively well priced. If you're not sure what this is, it's basically a network connected tuner. Uh, in this case, in the UK, a HD Freeview tuner. Um, and so like I said, the whole idea is you can plug this in to your network and then by any network connected device, you can stream your TV channels to it. Um, there are applications involved, so I'm not sure if there's anything uh, for Android. Um, there's definitely some free stuff. I'm, I'm sure there's something for Android. Uh, don't have Android device. Definitely some stuff uh, for iOS. There's Windows applications, there's Mac applications, uh, also works to uh, consoles, so PlayStation 4, Xbox, etc. Uh, I know quite a few people use them with uh, Windows Media Center as well. So yeah, I'm interested to check this out and see how it works. So let's um, unbox it, let's see what we have inside. So here we have it. This is the device. So let's just uh, put that over to one side right now and take a little look. Wow. That, that's pretty that's pretty damn small. Um, I've got a Apple TV Gen 3 here. Um, so if we use that as comparison, that's it's it's slightly smaller than Apple TV Gen 3. So that's amazing. Um, so first thing that stands out to me, uh, when I saw it online, I bought this from Amazon, uh, and on the back, it has a standard RF connector, which is great to see. Uh, in the video, in the picture I saw online, it was like a satellite connector, so I had bought a, a converter for that. Um, but even though this is a dual tuner, it has one single RF input, uh, a Cat5 uh, network port. There's a small LED under there as well. I know that this is red when not active and green when it is and then uh, a power socket, and it's uh, five volt, one amp. Uh, on the bottom is the device ID and MAC address. So on the front, there are three LEDs. One is the power LED light, and then you have two over here. As I mentioned already, this is a dual tuner, so there's two tuners in this little bad boy, uh, and these lights light up depending on what tuner is being used. So. I guess for some clarity there, you can obviously have two devices watching two different channels, both of them will be lit up. You could have one device watching something and another device recording something on another channel uh, and you have uh, those two tuners uh, lights that will be indicated there, which is that's pretty awesome. What else is in the box? Okay, quick start guide. Um, so short version is you just go to the website myhdhomerun.com and it will ask you to download an app and get up and running. So we'll, we'll try that out in a bit. What else do we have in here? Power cable, I assume. Power supply. Yep. Okay, yeah, five volt, one amp, power supply. Nothing uh, too amazing there. And Cat5 E cable for connecting it to the network. Excellent. 
perhaps it's just me, and I guess, I think I know the answer for this. I would have liked to have had an RF cable in it so I can connect it to the aerial. Uh, but I guess to save on effort, because I guess they ship these around the world, obviously with just different component on, so they can't be asked to have an RF cable in there or a satellite cable. I think that sucks. But anyway, let's get this plugged in, check it out, see how it works, uh, and then give you my initial thoughts. Okay, so let's go to the myhthomerun.com website, and straight away we can see it's detected the device, which is excellent. Also shows the current uh, firmware version, so that looks relatively up to date. I'm not sure if it is the, the most recent. Uh, we also see it's already scanned and found 141 channels. So looking there, it looks kind of what we'd expect here in the UK. BBC channels, ITV, Channel 4. Of course, the adult section, uh, as well as uh, different news uh, radio stations. So that looks good. See what else we can see on the device if we go direct. Um, so yeah, confirms the model number. Look at the tuner status. So this isn't showing anything. I would assume, obviously, when we are streaming or, or accessing it, we would show what channel was selected and perhaps uh, signal strengths, etc., and, and, and the quality and how well it's locked on. Obviously, we're not doing anything right now, so that's all just uh, doing nothing, I guess. Um, device ID, MAC address, IP address, all that stuff is good. Look at the system log. That just shows, I guess, what's been happening. So you can see some from some previous testing, uh, a couple of channels being accessed and delivered over the network. So excellent. So let's get things installed and uh, try this thing out. So I'm going to be installing the Mac OS X. That's what we're running here. But you can see, obviously, there's uh, tooling for Windows, Android, and Linux, and also information on configuring for various other applications, be that consoles or PVRs or what have you. So we won't look at that, um, but um, yeah, right now we we'll just focus on this OS X install. When we get this installed, we're gonna use the HD Home Run tool, so it's worth just seeing how that works. Seems pretty straightforward. Press the space bar, up and down arrows to change channel type in to search for a specific channel. So it all seems pretty basic and straightforward, so really easy for anyone to use, which is perfect. So now it's uh, downloaded. Let's install this and get it going. So it's uh, double click the package, do the install. Obviously it will prompt uh, for credentials to log in. Um, so we just get past that screen. Um, not interested in recording. As I mentioned before, we're gonna use the Plex DVR. So we just go with the, the viewing software. Okay, excellent, that's pretty straightforward. Um, so we can see it's doing some firmware update or firmware checks. So it's obviously found the device on the network, doing any checks to see if any f new firmware is available. So I guess that confirms back um, and how it kind of keeps the firmware up to date, which is pretty cool. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So we've got two applications installed now, the Home Run View and the Config GUI. So let's take a look at the Config GUI first and see what that gives us. Okay, um, so again, a bit like on the status screen earlier, we can see some information about the tuners, um, signal status or whatever. Obviously, because nothing's happening, nothing will be displayed here, um, but I guess we'd see the different bars, and we can see that we have manual ways to upgrade the firmware if anything becomes available. So not really handy to us right now, but good to know it's there. So let's shut that down and try out the viewing tool. Uh, crap, looks like we need to have VLC installed. Let's uh, get that fixed quickly and try it again. Okay, so we're all back up and running again. VLC is installed. Let's launch the app. And here we go. So you can see on the right hand side, there quickly popped up. We can see the different channels. It seems to be streaming uh, pretty well. I've got the audio turned off just for copyright reasons. Let's try channel four. So I guess there's, there's a bit of delay as the stream starts, but then it seems pretty straightforward uh, and the image is really clear. And back to channel one, check out the news. Excellent. Seems to work really well and really straightforward. Happy with that.
So, that's it. I mean, I'm, I'm really impressed with just how simple and straightforward that thing is to set up. Literally, it kind of is the definition of plug and play, really. Plug it in, it finds all the channels, install the software, job is a good one. So, yeah, I'm, I'm really impressed. Uh, I think, like I said at the beginning of the video, the real test for me is gonna become uh, when I move forward and um, integrate it with Plex so I can have availability to watch TV live through Plex and record and set up as a DVR. So that's gonna be really good. The one thing I noticed is I should be able to get um, HD channels and there was no HD channels and um, discovering those 144 channels or whatever it was, 141 channels. Um, but I have noticed kind of, I live in a dip and even the TV itself sometimes decides it can't see those HD channels. So perhaps that will come and go. Uh, I'll keep an eye on that. But really impressed with just how well it works. Uh, I did do a brief um, test on the iPad. There was a free, um, I think it's called TV Pro. I tried it out, it worked fine. You have to pay to install the audio codec, so just ignore that. But just the fact it works so well, um, you know, on the laptop or, you know, on the Mac and in Windows you know, and on the console as well. So perfect for anyone, that, you know, has a console somewhere that doesn't have a TV antenna like I have here. So really impressed. So I think it was, like I said, hundred pounds, not super cheap, but for what it gives you, you know, I, I think it's worth it. And I think, you know, I'm really looking for that DVR integration uh, with Plex. It's going to be excellent. So keep an eye out for that video. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.